good. So architecture in Antarctica. So architecture, it was because I, I really, in a deep way, wanted to write about me being a failure as a novelist, right? I wanted to write about Bernadette feeling like a failure and not being able to bounce back from failure because that was really the, the really sad, awful truth of what I was, it was very shameful, you know? And I couldn't even talk to people about it, but I thought, like, that's a sweet spot that you want to write about, you know, stuff that you're so ashamed of that you can't even speak about it. But I thought, okay, I'm going to write about it because then, I, you know, it, it'll, it'll have some energy and some truth to it. And I didn't want to write about her being a novelist in the first novel, blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, get out the violence. You know, nobody, nobody would. If, if they would, believe me, I would have written about it. But so I, I thought the, the, the writer in me and the craftsman in me realized I needed to transpose it onto another art form. And I thought architecture was visual. And I thought that I, and I love architecture, and I've uh, renovated houses, and I've worked with architects. And, it was, and I have opinions about houses, so I felt like already I was just in a comfort zone in terms of like I could then create a character that would think this stuff, you know, about, you know, I, I don't dislike craftsman houses, for instance, you know, but I think they're everywhere and I could see someone who is a really cutting edge architect who does all this crazy stuff and then it's just craftsman bungalows, so it'll be easy. And look, I can come up with uh, why somebody wouldn't like craftsman houses, you know, so that it's not like that was me, but I understood, okay, that the character would have to have an opinion about the local architecture and that's what she saw, so I just turned it into that. Um, and then Antarctica, was because about, um, I st started writing the book in, in, an, in around November of whatever year it was, and then we had had a trip plan to Antarctica. Um, my family did, the exact trip in this, in this book. And so we were gonna go down and without, why when I was kind of forming the character and her world and the, you know, Audrey and realizing she needed a, an antagonist and it would be a mother at school, it would kind of be the opposite of her. As I was kind of constructing all of this stuff in my mind, I thought, you know, I want to point this family in the direction of Antarctica because I'm going there and, and at the very least it's going to be interesting and kind of original and something that a lot of people, not a lot of people have written about with authority, you know? So I just thought, okay, we're heading down there and maybe I'll come up with a plot point when I'm there, maybe I won't, maybe they will never get there. I just had no idea what would happen, but I felt like there was some ri riches, kind of potential riches there. So I started writing the book and then we got down to Antarctica and I just loved it, loved it, loved it, just like Bernadette did. And I was just, just blown away by the blue and the formations and the sadness of it and just the, the whole thing was, just overwhelming to me, and um, in uh, in the in one day I was out and without. I'm, I think a lot of I mean, you have read the book, so I'm not going to give away too. Is people not read the book? Okay, can I say one thing about it or not? Okay, okay, it's only one person. I feel like okay, sorry, <laughs> you're in the wrong place. Um, okay, good. Uh, is uh, is so so what? Um, so I, I one day was out kayaking and came back in and the card didn't scan, it just went kind of bong, you know, and the guy said, oh, the ship, and literally it's a line from the book, the ship doesn't know that you left it, you know, as if the ship was a person. The ship thinks you're still on it or something like that. And then I went, oh, hang on a second, there's my plot point, you know, and then I started thinking about it. Like, wait, okay, so what does that mean? She, somebody could have gotten off the ship and been off for a long time before they knew about it. And so then I thought, okay, someone needs to disappear in Antarctica. Who is it? And then I just, that has to be my heroine. So then I just figured it all out and kind of back, reverse engineered it, you know, from that one plot point. And, um, and I'm very uh, plot oriented, you know, in my mind. I'm always... Uh, even if something really, really good happens. Um, I was at, at dinner a couple nights ago and I was telling people a, a story that I won't get into because it's too long, just about trying to adopt a dog and going to see this foster dog and then the, the foster family rejected me and my daughter and, <laughs> and was mean to boot, I would say. Made, made, made us both cry and it was really this messed up situation. And, 
and and this um, and uh, I know well so so then so what's interesting is the person said oh you have to oh this will be the next because I really I wrote about it in a I discussed it in a way that people in the table were crying I mean it was such a crazy story and the details were so funny and it was so weird and they said oh this will be your next book and then I thought, well, I don't know how it works into a plot. Like, you can't just have, like, then what happens? Then what happens? Then do the, just do the people then decide to take revenge on the foster parents of this little <laughs> puppy? You know, or whatever it is. Like, I don't know what it is, but how is it going to, you know, like, it's not enough for it to be, like, good and original, but, you know, but until I can figure out a way that it, it fits into the plot, you know, like the like the virtual assistant, you know, like okay, it's a virtual assistant, and it's just kind of chilling out. But then what happens, you know? Then so I'm always trying to kind of push it, push it, push it, you know, and compress the action and make more happen rather than less happen, you know, which I think is fun for a reader, you know. Oh my gosh, I'm about to badmouth a book. I just read this book. Who I like her write, writing, Curtis Sittenfeld. She wrote this book called Sisterland, right? Does anyone read this book? Okay, so okay, so I just read this a couple days ago. And it's these sisters, and one of them has this premonition that there's gonna be an earthquake, right? So you think like, and they're psychic sisters, and there's a premonition there's gonna be an earthquake, and that's like page 20. And you think, okay, hey, this is a good book. How lucky for me that I'm reading this. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and then like 20 pages before the end finally it's the day of the earthquake and then guess what there's no earthquake and I'm just like Curtis get into my writing class man get in here because I'm gonna tell you what you do is then you put the earthquake on page 22 is what you do you don't then put 300 pages and then there's no earthquake. There has to be an earthquake, and it has to be the next thing that happens. You know, I mean, I'm tough that way. And, and I'm just like, what a, what a horrible excuse for a book. You know, I really, uh, sorry, now I, I just lost her. Sorry, aunties, should I buy the, your copies of Sisterland? I know, now I have to like buy them off the shelves, um, the book, because uh, no one's going to buy it. But, but anyway, I just feel like well, that's not good storytelling. That's that to me, who's, you're reading it? Who's reading it? Yeah, so do you know what I'm talking about? Well, okay. Uh, I said, spoil nothing happens yeah uh, yeah yes yeah no they thought it was sad well they were crying in sadness because well they were it was kind of it, it's again the cruel laughter is that what was funny about it is that my daughter love this dog so much and I have a picture of it on my phone in fact when I sign I'll show you the picture picture of on my phone of this daughter holding this cute little dog that she was so in love with and then and then my daughter really I don't know how why she's not doing the math emotionally on this but she like wants to make that picture our Christmas card and that's why they were laughing so much even though she knew we were knows we were rejected this was actually I, I, I will say that the reason why I even started telling the story is is um, is that so we do have this dog named Ralphie and someone's asking me where the how we got the name Ralphie and the thing is that first foster dog that was like a month before we got this one was named Ralphie and so so my daughter after we got rejected and they were so mean to us and we were crying and we were in the car and I had to pull over because I was crying so hard I thought I crashed the car my daughter said you know what I'm gonna do to show them we're gonna name our dog Ralphie that's <laughs> show them and I was like well it doesn't really show them but it is a pretty cute name let's name him Ralphie so anyway that's we it was like a very weird way that we got the, the dog named Ralphie but um but but it was just funny so you know so but that the, the, believe me that's gonna end up somewhere in my next book just because it has a lot of emotion and there was a lot of like um it was it was a kind of cl class stuff you know and it was there was kind of class issues that without getting too deeply into it that were interesting there was something to me that's fundamentally interesting about someone who has something of no value which is like a dog dying in the neighbor's yard next door that they rescue lording it over you like they have power over you like that's really messed up you know and it was this like power politics 
And it's one thing if you have something of value, but it's like, this is just a flea-ridden puppy, you know, that should be, be sent to the pound. Like, it was just so, there was a lot of very interesting elements to it. So it'll probably end up in the book in some way, you know, but maybe a, it'd be a huge set piece, maybe just a line, I don't know, you know, but that's, that does it as the components that are interesting enough. Yes, in the shadows. Okay, so, so we chose Seattle because um, my boyfriend had gone to the NCAA tournament there about 15 <laughs> years earlier. I mean, it was the stupidest thing we could have done. Uh, and it, he just, and he was really ready to leave, and I, he, when we, it was one of these things, I mean, this is, when we, I, when we met 23 years ago, it was like on the first date. And he had just started, like, he was like, oh, I'm working on this cartoon show. I was like, ooh, I don't know that I want to date a cartoon writer, you know? And he was like, because I'm a snob, get that. And so <laughs> then he said, oh, yeah, it's going to be on. And it ended up being The Simpsons, you know, which, I, you know, so it was before The Simpsons was on the air. He had just been hired to, to write for the show. And so that's when he, on our first date, he said, I want to move out of Los Angeles. And I just, when this cartoon show's over, as soon as this job's over, I'm going to leave <laughs> L.A. And I, you know, so you shine people on. Am I right, ladies? Uh, you say, yeah, sure, we'll move out of L.A. You know what I mean? You just kind of think you're going to change them, you know? And so uh, after every, uh, you know, these fights, of, you said we'd leave L.A. the first day I met you. You said you'd do it. And so finally I was like, fine, we'll move. Where do you want to go? Shut up. And he said, Seattle. And so I got on a plane, went up to Seattle, just like Bernadette, met a realtor from the Internet and bought a house. It was really crazy. Uh, and then we moved. We moved. It just totally up and, uh, upended uh, ourselves, uprooted ourselves. Now, um, I love Seattle now, in fact. And I feel like um, I love the anonymity of it relatively to LA. You know, I love that uh, even though now, you know, it's crazy. People recognize me on the street and, and the, it's kind of, this book has slightly ruined the anonymity for me. Um, but, but I like, you know, we, we're now one of these weird Seattle trees people. We don't have a lot of friends. We don't go out a lot. We're, we actually have friends, but I mean, we're not that social. I've kind of, we've now settled into the way that people in Seattle live, you know? We um, just kind of stay home in the rain and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Uh, and, and think it's a beautiful city. You know, I do. I think it's a beautiful city now, and I, and, and I came around to that, so I really love it. Yes? Okay, so I'm a gal from Seattle. Okay. And I used to work at Microsoft, and uh, Catholic with an alcoholic mom. So I have mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on over, yeah. Come on. Get writing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Being on the road in North Dakota is tough. Um, two questions. One is, what is the feedback you're getting from people at Microsoft uh, about the character there? And then also, being from Seattle, I did so, you know, identify with it. But from other cities, what's the general you're just getting a lot of positive feedback? So, so the Microsoft thing, so when I... Uh, was putting my family together in my mind. I wanted to make it as real as I could, you know? Like, I feel like I don't have the imagination to just totally create stuff. Or, or, or I feel like I like to root it in reality as much as possible, and then the stuff you make up, you don't know if it's made up. You know, you, you need kind of those touchstones. I think it's very important. In fact, uh, I'm now just paraphrasing Philip Roth, who I read in an interview, was saying it's very important to write about stuff you know, to know what this, the stuff you make up, what level you need to bring it to in terms of detail and reality. And I think that's a really good way of thinking about it. So I um, thought the husband should work in the tech world, right? And then I was looking through my daughter's uh, parent handbook and half the Email addresses are at Microsoft.com. And at first I thought it was like, oh, at Yahoo.com. I didn't understand that that meant that they worked at Microsoft. <laughs> and it's such a company town. I really had no idea the extent of it. 